Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Welcome to Lila Valley. This is our uh, Christmas Eve candlelight service that we're having here today. Um, everything you're going to need is actually inside your bulletin today. We even have the hymns printed in there for you, but we also have them up on the number board in case you'd like to see them with their uh, four-part harmony inside the hymnal. But we gather tonight really around that idea that Jesus is the light of the world. What does that mean for us? How does it affect our lives? That'll be our, our focus tonight with our worship. So with that, let's begin our worship on page number three. Please stand. Make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. We have seen the glory of the Christ, the glory of the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. We pray. O loving God, you once caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Turn our thoughts toward Bethlehem and to the Christ child. May the words of scripture we hear tonight remind us again that the old story is ever new. May the carols we sing tonight reveal to us again the mystery of his birth. May the candles we see tonight symbolize for us your son as the light of the world. May all who have known that light on earth come to the full measure of its joys in heaven. Help us, O Lord, in our worship this night. Amen. We sing, O Come All You Faithful, on page number four in the bulletin.
Our first lesson for this Christmas Eve comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. These words will serve as a basis of this evening's sermon. We hear. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of our Lord. We sing our next hymn, hymn number 54, Where Shepherds Lately Knelt. That's on page number 6 in the bulletin. <coughs> come to us, but it changes what we do now. Hear what Paul says to a young pastor regarding this very topic in Titus chapter 2. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. 
It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. This is the word of our Lord. At this time, I invite the uh, children to come forward for a children's message. Happy. He takes away all of our sins. And because of that, we can look forward to life and blessing. This is a green light. When you see Christmas trees especially, they're always green. They're called evergreens because they never lose their leaves. They always show light. So green makes us think of light. And then I got a blue light. Blue light in the sky. Blue because we know that one day, because Jesus shed his blood for us and he made us holy, red and white. One day we'll go to heaven. As so we think of the blue skies, and that's where I have the last one. The yellow light. Thinking about how, how bright and how glorious it'll be. That even sometimes the Bible describes it like gold. So just by looking at lights, we can have the whole Christmas story, the whole plan of what God did for us told. So when you go home tonight, you see those different colored lights, I want you to think about all the things that God has done for you. Remember, he's our greatest Christmas gift ever. So let's let's fold our hands, bow our heads, let's pray about that. Dear God, thank you for coming to this earth to live for us, to die for us, to take us to heaven, that we will be with you forever in that wonderful paradise. Thank you for giving us the best gift of yourself. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can head back to your Thanks for coming up here this, <coughs> this evening. Can you tell I do this a lot on Sundays? <laughs> Now, having concluded our, our children's message, we're going to have a little bit different order to our flow to our service. At this point, we're going to gather our gifts and offerings to our newborn king. Uh, while the, the offering plates are being uh, passed around, if you are new to Light of the Valley, it's your first time here, and would like to know more about our church, would like me to contact you in the future, we have just little information cards in each of the pews. You can fill that out and put that in the offering plate as it comes around, or um, you can just hand that to me at the end of the service today. So with that, let's continue our worship by gathering offerings to the Lord.
Please stand for prayer. We'll follow the prayer of the church as printed starting on page number seven. We pray. Oh well, gracious and almighty Father, we praise you that you kept your ancient <coughs> promises by sending your everlasting Son in human flesh. On this holy night, receive our thanks and devotion, our songs and prayers. You sent Jesus as a lowly child to demonstrate your concern for all, the weak and lonely, the troubled and frightened, the timid and helpless. No one is overlooked by your ever-seeking eyes. No one is excluded by your mighty arms. No one is denied the comfort and help of your outstretched hand. Bless us with the childlike faith and the divine assurance that you love and care for us always. You sent Jesus as the Savior of the world to deliver all from the curse of sin, the power of death, and the torment of hell. He took our place. He was born under the law to set us free. He became the innocent lamb of sacrifice. He came to die and rise again so that we might live eternally. Firmly implant this good news in our hearts and fill us with an eager desire to spread the word concerning what we have heard tonight. May all who hear the message and every nation under heaven be amazed and believe what is told them about this child. You sent Jesus as the light of the world to drive out all darkness that would rob us of the life that you intended for us. May the joy that will be for all people be our joy. May the peace on earth to all on whom his favor rests be our peace. May the treasure that Mary pondered be our treasure. For today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. Amen. And we pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We'll sing our next hymn, Hymn 67, What Child Is This? You'll find that on pages 8 and 9 in the book.
forgot to tell you, when the candles do come round, you take the lit one and the unlit one, you put the unlit one in there, so you don't have to spill wax on anyone. So just keep that in mind when we actually light the candles here tonight. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who was born on Christmas. Our portion of God's Word that we're going to focus on this evening comes from that first lesson from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. Let us begin meditation on that word. Let us pray. Lord, as we meditate on the gift that you gave us of your child, May our hearts be filled with his light, to know that he is the light of life. In your name we pray. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, it's a very special tradition that we have here at Light of the Valley to do these Christmas Eve candlelight services. If you've been to one before, you probably treasure that same tradition. It's something you like to do, something you look forward to when Christmas comes around. Myself, growing up, I had some traditions on Christmas Eve, a little bit different than they are now. Uh, growing up in a household, we had, uh, I had an older brother, older sister. So all I ever knew was on Christmas Eve, you would have to go to church because one of us, most of the time it was all of us, were participating in the children's Christmas program. Once that was done, we'd pack up and we'd head over to farm grandma and grandpa, so you know where they live, and then spend some time there. And then coming home, we'd take the long way home specifically so that we could just take some time gazing at the lights that are all around town and to just enjoy them. Then you come home, maybe get some food, because we don't know how long it's been since we've last eaten, and we open presents. Yeah, we did presents on Christmas Eve. I don't get to do those same traditions right now at this point in my life. Um, first of all, I live in Utah now with my family. Don't live in Wisconsin. I can't just jump in the car and head over and make it there tonight to be with them. And also, my wife and I are very cognizant that we have to get our children back home and in bed at a decent time because I've got to be here again tomorrow morning and preach another message. And they're going to have to be here, so I want them well rested. But we still take that time to marvel at the lights during Christmas. My wife and took the two boys driving a couple weeks back during the night just so that they could see them. We uh, went to Layton Common Park uh, a couple weeks ago, beginning of the month, and saw their, their lights before Christmas display and took a hayride around that. It's a very special part, and I hope as our kids get older, and maybe we can do more, maybe we can keep them up later on Christmas Eve, we'll get to do those things that I got to do on my Christmas Eves growing up. Regardless, though, I hope you all can take just a little bit extra time on the way home tonight. Maybe take the long way home. Just to marvel for a little bit at all those wonderful Christmas lights. Well, what if? What if something strange happened? What if, on your way home tonight, or wherever it is that you're going, there were no Christmas lights? What if? Everywhere where you looked, nothing was lit up. No nativities have that bright shining star above it that no lights would be lit on any of the houses. To think about all the Santas and the Rudolphs and the Frosties that are out there, just dull. Think about it more. What if your home didn't have any lights welcoming you back? What if the lights to the garage door, not on, the lights beckoning you up to the front door, dead? What if in all those sitting rooms where people have their, their ornamented tree with all the, the precious colors and lights, what if that wasn't there either? What if it just looked like all the bulbs were burnt out? What if on your way home there weren't any street lights? What if your headlights didn't work? What if your cell phone was out of juice and you couldn't use your flashlight out? What if it was just completely 
dark. What if all light was gone? Would you make it home? Would you find your way around? Now take it here, we have some light still. What if all of these lights went out? What if our lights, completely in the sanctuary, were gone? Every single one of them turned off. Now I know legally I can't shut off the exit lights on you. But you just think in a moment. Think about what it would be like to be living in a land of deep darkness. To be a people walking in darkness. Would you make it, would you make it to home, wherever you're going? Thinking to myself, I'm, I'm pretty sure that as our lights extinguish, we could probably grope around and feel our way out of this building. We could probably get out of here just fine. But once you got on the road, to so think about this, this, this setting with no stars, no moon, no lights whatsoever, nothing that you have can shine any sort of light. How many times are you going to trip? How many times are you going to fall? How many times are you going to get lost? Would you ever make it home if you lived in deep darkness, if there was no light? Maybe you've been there where you can't even see your hand in front of your face. To be truly in what Isaiah says, people walking in darkness. To be people, those living in the land of deep darkness. Darkness like this, even though it's not completely dark, doesn't feel good. It's kind of smothering. It feels cold. It's depressing. Plants need light to live. Humans need light to live. We have a whole disorder named after the fact that humans don't get enough sun during the winter times when it's cloudy and overcast. Sad. Seasonal affective disorder. We don't like the darkness. Kids and adults the same. We shiver not just because the temperature goes down, but because we know bad things happen in the darkness. Evil breeds in darkness. That's why we avoid the alleyways and the streets where there are no lights. The longer we live in it, the less life we feel like we have. Complete and total darkness, you feel afraid even to move. This total darkness is what God describes us, spiritually speaking. That when we come into this world, we come in as sinners. Imperfect people, an imperfect world. That we have not lived up to God's standard, which is total and absolute perfection. And because we come in sinful at birth, we are chained to this sin. Bound to this darkness. It drains us of all warmth and it drains us of life to the point where... What's the, what is the point? Why go on? Why live? Almost waiting just for that moment where the icy fingers of death will finally take you. Funny thing about darkness, though. Darkness in and of itself is not a color. It's the absence of color. It's the absence of light. All you need is one point of light. And suddenly, you have something that you can see something that you can focus on. Now 
Now there's no longer darkness. There is darkness, but you can see this light. It can guide you. It can show you where to go. There's no amount of darkness that will ever shut this light out. What if we take this light with us? What if we pass it on? If you were to take this light with you, you then know where you can go. You then can see your way. As you take this light and pass it along, you can see. As more light goes, it becomes brighter. And all of a sudden now, we're no longer just a people living in darkness. Now, Now we're people walking in darkness who have seen a great light. For those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Who is that light? That light that came into the world is none other than Jesus Christ. It's the very one that Isaiah said of him. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. His, he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness, from that time on and forever. The light has come into the world. This is not just some baby in a manger born some 2,000 years ago. This is mighty God who has come into the world specifically for you. He has come not just as a helpless infant, but in fact, he is that light that then shatters the darkness, the light that no darkness can overcome. He is powerful. He is mighty. That, that darkness of sin that we lived in, the light has come to disperse that, to take that away from us, that we would never live in darkness again. All of this just as God foretold it to be, that the Emmanuel, the God with us, the same one Isaiah prophesied about, he is this child who was born to us. The same one who was born as prophesied by Micah, that he would be born in Bethlehem. The one who came just as it was written about him. And because he has come, he rules. He reigns over our lives with peace, with justice. Because he has come to be the perfection that we could not be, to be the perfection that we could never earn, no matter how many good things we ever done. He came to live under the law, to fulfill the law, to give us his perfection and his righteousness. That's what it means that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And he tells us explicitly, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We came here tonight probably hoping we'd get to do this very thing, to get to, to light our candles, to have that candlelight service but it means so much more. It's not about just coming here for, for traditions or for warm thoughts and happy feelings, but to know that we once were living in darkness. But light has come to us. Jesus has come to us. His light takes away the darkness in our lives. His light, although it shows me for what I am, it shows me imperfect, it shows Him as the perfection that I need. It shows him as the one who did this all for me. What will you do with this light after tonight? 
I know these physical candles, you'll blow them out, we'll save them, we'll use them in the next service, but what will you do knowing that the light of the world has come to you? Are there people that you know that are still groping around in the darkness? People who are still had, held captive of sin? Will you share this light with them? Will you keep them from groping and stumbling in the dark? Will you show them that because of Christmas, we have a Savior? That's who we came here to celebrate tonight. That's who is the light of the world. That's the one that we can take with us as we leave today, knowing that that light always goes with us. It dwells in our hearts by faith. And you can share that light with others. You can tell them, for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. Our Gospel reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus and all the world should, that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made while Cyrenius was governor of Syria. All went, all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, because being great with child. And so it was, that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be of all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. We sing Silent Night.
Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. church uh, that will be there to be handed out. Please uh, grab one on your way. It's kind of our just little gift to you. Also, um, if you haven't received one before, we have a few DVDs there too of My Son, My Savior. Just a little 30 minute film uh, kind of talking about what it would have been like to be Mary um, and having this wonderful child given to you in such a miraculous way. Uh, so feel free to get those. Those are all together there um, on your way out. 
Um, with that, just uh, also remember to bring your candles back and leave them in the boxes with the ushers. And uh, I wish you the most merry and blessed Christmas. And God willing, we'll see you again.